this is a report on the performance in uh, the three, four global IP systems that the organization administers. One for patents, one for trademarks, one for designs, and one for dispute resolution amongst private parties. Uh, the, uh, these activities constitute 96% of the revenue of the organization, so they're the basis of the organization. Uh, member state contributions are 4%. 96% of the organization's revenue come from the services that we render under these. They each provide uh, somewhat different measures or indicators for their respective fields. So uh, the degree of fidelity, and I have an expert sitting next to me, but the degree of fidelity of the indicators depends on a couple of things. One of them is the membership of the systems. So in the case of the patent system, it's the most complete. It's nearly 150 countries, 148. In the case of the uh, trademark system, Madrid, uh, it's around about 113 countries, so it's less complete. And the least mature is the Hague system for designs, which is uh, around about 50 countries. For arbitration and mediation, it's open to the whole world. Uh, what I are these uh, systems telling us? Well, uh, very briefly, and then you can go into the details in your questions if you like. Insofar as uh, patents are concerned, the Patent Cooperation Treaty, growth last year at a, a slightly lower rate, 1.7%. Uh, it's the sixth consecutive year of growth after the global financial crisis around about 220,000 uh, international patent applications overall, exactly 218, so I'll use round figures. And the major story, I suppose, continues to be this continuing trend of growth from Asia, uh, in particular in order of uh, size, Japan, China, and the Republic of Korea. So Asia, accounted for 43% of all international patent applications filed in 2015. So it's quite an extraordinary uh, figure, really, and a growth that we have seen. Sorry? You said 43 43. 43, yeah. So it's extraordinary. So if you're looking at where new technology is produced as, as measured by the patent indicator, and it's one of the best we have, 43% of it is coming out of Asia. Uh, and in terms of the top filers, uh, well, again, four, uh, three of the first four come from Asia. So the top filers in order are Huawei Technologies uh, from China, uh, Qualcomm from the United States of America, Samsung Electronics from Korea, followed by Mitsubishi Electro Electric uh, in Japan. Uh, I'm not going to go into many more details because I'll leave it to uh, you to ask questions, but we're very happy to give you further details about all of this, including, for example, university filings, which are uh, an interesting feature of this. In terms of trademarks, then, let me turn to the Madrid system. Uh, a slightly higher rate of growth, 2.9% in 2015. We're coming on to 50,000 international trademarks per year, uh, the, I'm using round figures, the exact figure uh, was uh, 49,000, 49,000, yes. 49, yes. Um, we, uh, I mentioned at the outset, it depends on uh, the geographical spread, it also depends on when countries have joined the system, uh, and uh, in the case of Madrid, we know that uh, the Asian countries have joined uh, rather more recently this system. Never, so it still remains a system where uh, European countries, together with the United States, are the top users. Uh, and I wouldn't want to extrapolate too much in terms of, of um, conclusions that one can draw from that because of the you know, relatively recent use by Asian countries. But if you think of <coughs> areas where branding is important, fashion, uh, design, uh, and so forth, 
uh, of course, European companies as well as American companies are very strong in uh, these areas. So the top filer, uh, filing country is the United States, followed by uh, Germany and France. Uh, Asian, uh, of the Asian countries, China and Japan rank seven and eight, respectively. Uh, and uh, of the top filing uh, uh, companies, uh, the top one is uh, Novartis, followed by Lidl, followed by L'Oreal, followed by Philips Electronics. Uh, so a good result for this, I think, uh, and happy to go into further details. On the design system, well, this is the most recent of, well, it's in, in chronologically not, but it's revision to uh, make it a global system is the most recent. <coughs> and we're now seeing, starting to see it take off, uh, uh, largely as a consequence of the uh, accession by uh, the Republic of Korea, Japan, and the United States of America uh, in the course of the last two years. Uh, so the growth rate that we saw in applications here was about uh, 40%. Uh, so this will become an increasingly interesting indicator of design activity around the world because we expect uh, more big economies to be joining this system in the coming year or two. Uh, the performance of Korea is very interesting because it joined the system only 18 months ago uh, and now uh, Samsung Electronics has a displaced Swatch as the top filer of international design applications. Uh, it filed 1,132 compared to Swatch's 511. Uh, the top filing countries I think I gave you, or I may not have, are Germany, uh, followed by Switzerland and France. But we'll see an evolution of that in the coming years with respect to, in particular, uh, Japan, the Republic of Korea and the United States of America. For our arbitration centre, then, if I move on to that... We can do that later. We can do it later. Okay, fine. Good. Is that? We're open for Q&A. So on the first, uh, it's true that there's a relative stability in the top filers, um, apart from this big historical trend of seeing uh, the ascension of first in time Japan, followed by uh, China and the Republic of Korea. Um, and what are we measuring here? We're measuring the output, output really, of technological capacity. So it does reflect the differences in technological capacity around the world. But we are aware of that, we know that. Uh, is that changing the, the levels, the asymmetries, if you like, that exist with respect to uh, technological capacity? And I think it's changing, but it's a slow process. Uh, because to innovate, of course, uh, you require a whole infrastructure or ecosystem which is very broad ranging uh, and it ranges from everything from the education system to through to uh, business sophistication and your capacity to be able to support innovative activity with uh, appropriate intermediaries and capital markets for example so it's you're talking about in terms of technological capacity a huge 
ecosystem covering really the whole of the economy. So it's not surprising that there are no sharp movements in this area, apart perhaps I would say from China, uh, where there has been you know, a dramatic change in a relatively short period of time. Uh, whether the differences are getting greater or, uh, or not is, I think, a, a, a very major question that I would prefer not to hazard an answer on, because I think that's a really uh, a crucial question for the world, cru crucial question of political economy, and I think you'd need to, you would need to measure that extremely carefully before you made a, a, a uh, guess at whether the differences are getting greater or not. All we know, what we do know though, is that uh, technology and knowledge more generally form an increasingly important component of wealth generation in the economy. Uh, and um, the speed at which uh, technology is developing uh, is accelerating. Uh, so that makes the catch-up task even more uh, difficult. On the second question, I think that the, I don't think the design law treaty, the proposed design law treaty, will have much of an influence on filing activity in the Hague system. What the proposed design law treaty uh, will do is make it easier for designers to obtain protection around the world for designs because uh, they will not have to contend with such a uh, perplexing complexity of procedural requirements in making an application. For China? No, for the Asian. For Asia, well, because I think it, it's a reflection of the uh, of two things. First of all, the uh, economic uh, dynamism of uh, the Asian countries, and in particular the three that I cited, uh, and secondly, the strategic focus of economic policy on innovation uh, in those countries. Yes, we can give it to you. We, we, we can give it that, yes. Because in the tables you, you gave us, uh, there's no ranking for the US first and government. One, two, three, four. We can get that to you. Uh, we can get that to you. It's, it's across the bottom. Yeah, that's but not for me, it's on the tables. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. sure. But we, we can get it we easily. We can get you first. Hold this, yeah. We can even, you can reproduce the uh, infographic also electronically. We can oh. get you any format, oh. format oh. you want. Oh. With pleasure. I have a question about the city application by companies. Um, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm correct, but uh, regarding Panasonic, it seems to me that two years ago they were, they were in first, last year second, and now 16th. Um, and and uh, like an change from the 2014, there's an increase of application. So I'm really puzzled by it. Yeah, I just missed the last piece of what you, well, uh, the, what you uh, said. Here, the change on the yeah. There's an increase compared to uh, for Panasonic. So basically, there are. I know it's a it's an absolute increase, but yep. the, the decline from the third the, the second round last year to 16th is uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know why. Yeah, I can get, get you. I mean, the simple answer to that Panasonic, but it also applies to Microsoft. What happened uh, last year was they have changed their name. So if you look at the name of this year, it's Panasonic Intellectual Property Management, where last year or the year before that it was Panasonic Corporation. Yeah. So there has been a change in the name. Uh, at the moment, we're just reporting what the actual name is registered in the application. There is also some application coming from Panasonic Corporation, but our guess is in the future, everything will be combined into Panasonic Intellectual Property Management. So it's a matter of changing the name, actually. Okay, so now there are... It's a transition. Transition. It's a transition. Some, yeah. some application for, from the corporation are yeah. included in this one? Yeah. It's not included in this one. This one is only Panasonic Intellectual Property Management. Okay. We have small number of application yeah. filed under the name of Panasonic Corporation. Okay. 
But at the moment, we just don't know the legal status of you know, changing the name. Or there's just a change of name, or there's something else taking place in the company structure. So next year, we can anticipate that the two will be merged and they will go up. That's we what we think. We hope so. They're doing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what we think they're doing, yes. Okay. I have a question on the top Madrid applicants as compared to the uh, top PCP applicants mm. based on published. Uh, that that's for the same kind of payment system, isn't it? Or, or, or One's uh, technology and the other's brands. Uh -huh. So so Madrid is brands, okay, uh -huh. and uh, patents is technology. PCT is technology. So you would expect a difference. You know. Fashion companies are not going to, they'll be filing designs and branding, but they're not going to be much in the technology area. Okay. Hi. Uh, sorry, I come back to PCT again. And uh, it's specific question in a very specific country, which is India. Even only last two years, actually. So it's difficult to see. <coughs> I'm seeing this in terms of the stagnation in the years part of PCT application. So you have also cited factors that hold up uh, technological growth, namely uh, lack of infrastructure, ecosystem, and so educational, uh, sound educational and business <coughs> institutions. Are these all the factors holding up India? What in your view are really holding up India's stagnation in, I mean, at a time when uh, you have high economic growth, but in contrast, you have a complete stagnation of intellectual uh, property creation. I wouldn't say it's a stagnation, first of all. Well, I think, go by the figures. okay, let me give you some figures. So from 2010 to 2015, the average growth rate of international patent applications from India was 2.2%. So that compares favorably with most European countries over uh, the same period, uh, which was an economically uh, turbulent period, a more difficult period, let's say. So uh, I wouldn't say stagnation at all. However, it's not the growth rates of China. Uh, so uh, how do you explain that? Well, I'm not an expert on uh, India in particular, uh, but I think um, it, uh, uh, what we are seeing is investment in innovation policy in India at the moment, and that uh, generally is a medium to long term policy, which we, or a policy that produces results in the medium to long term. It's not a policy that produces overnight. You don't start investing in, uh, let's say, research and development and expect to see patent applications skyrocket the very next year. It's a, a process. Uh, so uh, I would say that the jury is still out uh, and that we should uh, watch further on this. Masai, do you want to? No, I, I just want to follow up on what the Director General said. Uh, one of the things, we have to look at the long-term trend rather than just looking at the year-on-year -year fluctuation. And the other thing, uh, we've got to be careful when you compare with China or other countries. For example, if you look at the R&D investment, China has invested heavily over the last uh, 15 to 20 years. And at the moment, it's the second largest country in terms of R&D expenditure after US, where India is lagging behind. So we have to look at the investment in innovative activity over a long period of time. Uh, can I come back to it? In fact, you use the word dramatic several times in your introductory comments about China. Uh, in case of PCT, you also said about Korea and uh, I think uh, designs. Uh, so uh, I find it a bit uh, you know, puzzling your answer that given the kind of time series stagnation that you see, I mean, forget about. Uh, percentage growth, see it in absolute terms yeah. as you are seeing in China. Uh, are you trying to sort of not come clean on what exactly is happening in terms of stagnation in India? Uh, no, I would say that uh, the use of dramatic with respect to uh, China's 
uh, filings of international patent applications or careers filing of international uh, design applications are exceptions. They're exceptions. Uh, we don't see that elsewhere. Uh, these are extraordinary uh, developments. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that everyone else is in the, uh, you know, the, the, the dunce category. Uh, it means you've got two exceptional performers there. Uh, and uh, all the more exceptional when we know that uh, innovation policy is a very complex matter, it, uh, which doesn't produce immediate overnight results. So I wouldn't, you know, uh, put in my mouth the words that India is performing badly. I'm not saying that. Uh, uh, and I don't think it is the converse yeah. of the exceptional performance of two countries. Yeah, but you also said that investments in hmm. innovation in India are yeah. lagging far behind. Uh, uh, Masaid, Masaid said that investment in research and development, yes. Yeah. So yes, so well, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that's a so is that fact. Uh, I think that investment in research and development is a very important element. Uh, in innovation capacity, but it's not the only uh, well, factor. Well, I'd say everything from the strength of your education system, you know, because you're, we're talking about uh, the generation of new knowledge, and of course the transmission of existing knowledge is an essential basis to the generation of new knowledge. So your educational system uh, you can start with. Uh, the uh, uh, government policy framework which creates incentives for behaviour which uh, is uh, behaviour in this instance uh, uh, investment in innovation, uh, general awareness of the importance of uh, innovation as a competitive factor, as a, as a means of gaining competitive advantage the nature of your economy, what sort of things you're doing. In India has a strong service sector, for example. It has a very important uh, uh, creative industries sector with Bollywood and music and so on. Uh, and uh, these are not reflected in technology, uh, uh, technological activities. Uh, so uh, the extent to which you have risk capital, venture capital, the extent to which you have uh, a range of intermediaries who are assisting, I think there are, you know, we measure in the Global Innovation Index, for example, about 64 inputs. Yeah. Uh, so it's quite, it, it covers, that's the problem in a certain sense, it covers everything. If there was a simple way of saying, okay, we're going to be an innovation yeah. nation, uh, then we'd see more performers. So are you suggesting there are a lot of non-tangible factors, basically, Say, uh, <coughs> anti beliefs or anachronistic mm -hmm. systems that are holding up? Uh, you're suggesting that. Well, I didn't you. say that. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't think so. I think, look, India is a, a country, what, 1.3 billion people? Uh, well, less than that. 1.2 billion yeah. people. Vast. 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 Yeah. Differential levels of development within the country. Yeah. Within the country. Uh, pressing priorities across in, uh, the country in terms of infrastructure and in, uh, poverty alleviation, everything. Uh, so uh, it is, uh, it's also a, a, um, a large democracy uh, and I don't think you can decree, you know better than I, decree change in India. It's a process. Uh, it's just for my understanding when Novartis is in um, um, is the, is the, um, in the in the Madrid system. I mean, if, if you if you if you develop a new drug, you don't get a patent on it. I mean, it's, you, you get just a protection. Uh, you get uh, well. Look, uh, if I may answer it this way. Yeah. I think that uh, enterprises now mm -hmm. seek to protect their competitive advantage mm -hmm. in whatever way they can. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you are uh, marketing a new drug, uh, naturally, if it's new, you will be seeking patent protection. 
and that will give you the protection over the uh, basic technology. Uh, but you will also try to brand it so that consumers think, you know, whatever it might be, headache, aspirin. Uh, and uh, that's the function of the brand. Uh, and the br brand uh, creates that reputation and image in the marketplace. So you would do that as well. You might also, uh, although it's pretty rare on drugs, but you might also, uh, in other sectors, be looking at the design of the thing that you've got. So if we take a different example, if we take that example, you have patents in it for concerning the functionality, you have design in it concerning the look of it, and you have a brand that we all know. So they seek to uh, protect their competitive advantage in as many ways as possible. Yeah. So, 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 so in Holland, it's on a PCT, on a patent system, yeah. where, which rank? Uh, we can find it out. We can find it out. I mean, yeah. there in the what you have in what you have in the annex is the top fifty, but we have lists beyond that, and Novartis does appear in the list of top uh, PCT applicants. Uh -huh. But uh, so there's a lot of companies you'll see there, not only in the PCT but also in trademark yes. Madrid, also in industrial design. For example, Samsung, you see the top applicant in industrial design, but also they appear in the PCT. So you, you have Philip Electronics is another one where they're covering all three aspects of the IP. Please. Yeah, I wonder if you can explain to me uh, these figures uh, related to the international applications. There are a number of sub-Saharan African countries. Uh, for instance, Zambia has no applications by origin. Uh, but it has uh, designations to the driven and yep. the kind of the okay. And you've got the same sort of thing called the Sutu, uh, Zimbabwe, Yep. Olivia, Absolutely. Just explain what those sure. Sure. It's. It's. Thank you. It's a very interesting uh, uh, question because it also applies to top countries too. Uh, so the application is the generation of new brands in that country. So the extent to which that country, so enterprises, are developing uh, new brands. Designation is where. Uh, new brand owners, wherever they are, seek to protect their own brand, their new brands. So it's an indicator of the markets that are of interest to other countries. So in the uh, examples you've given, we don't see any new brands in, in new international brands uh, emerging from them, but we see international brands coming from other markets seeking protection there because they're going to be selling their products there.